morning everybody i'm joined by by colin who's just sat in the corner there so um he'll be here to, to help through the presentation and to help answer any questions at the end so i'm just going to start with an overview of county durham and sort of where we came to our our learning throughout uh, the last few months so county durham has a total population of over five hundred thousand. And of those, to put it into context, 70% almost live in the top 30% most deprived areas in the country. So for us, doing it the County Durham way meant that we could capitalise on the raised awareness and motivation that was generated by the national campaign. And to do this, we chose a local place-based mobilisation programme to support those people living with long-term conditions to be more active and to improve their physical and mental health. And our um, sort of aim was to, to, to sustain positive behaviour change. So originally, uh, we were supposed to begin in October 2019, but due to coronavirus, our plans uh, were diverted massively. And so we didn't actually start until February this year. So in essence, we're still um, beginning our, our journey, but really, really happy to share our learning with you so far. Ferry Hill and Chilton, that was our first place-based activation area for the campaign. And again, this had a population of approximately 19,000 people. It has one medical practice that serves the community. We chose this area based on um, public health insights, and that was from 2019 statistics. We also used our local public health County Durham insights and mapping exercises. So this combination highlighted to us that this area is significantly worse off compared with the England average when it came to population and demographic um, determinants and the wider determinants of health and, and outcomes. So again, to put it in a little bit of context, people that live in, in this area um, are more likely to have poor health for up to 16 years longer than those in more affluent areas. So a life, uh, sort of a healthy life expectancy for somebody in this area is about 59 for men and 58 for women. And we also found that um, long term conditions and mortality rates in this area have significantly higher than av average possible preventable deaths, sort of such as circulatory disease, heart disease and respiratory disease. So, again, it was a, a really good area to choose for us to make make a massive difference. So at the outset, this was our our plan. This was our approach. Again, we chose our first locality based on those um, insights and that research. That was the centre, that place-based activation. The idea then be begin, uh, sort of being to develop and refine the five work strands that you can see here. And this was to provide a pathway and that's going to support those people living with long-term conditions to be more active. This programme has has begun to develop and we, we've developed it into an action learning program and our learning from this will be used to inform the rollout in subsequent areas and has already begun to help us shape specific program and project planning for our wide service area. So I'm just going to take each of these strands separately and just talk you through them what we've what we've achieved some of the challenges that we've had along the way. So our first was our stakeholder engagement and community engagement plan. And with this, we were looking at capitalising on existing contacts, but we also thought it really important to look at our wider audience participation in the campaign. This also highlighted to us that um, some relationships had become sort of fragmented. Uh, and again, the campaign gave us a great opportunity to rebuild positive working partnerships. We set out um, to do this with our steering group. So we used and developed our existing partner networks to engage with people with long-term conditions. And that allowed us to have this really successful steering group. We have 17 partners. They're from <clears throat> statutory, voluntary community and the charity sector. 
So again, this allowed us to sort of share insights, knowledge, and, and gave us that sort of overarching command post for the pilot. As you can imagine, it's a key challenge to sort of get all those partners together, um, specifically sort of during, during COVID. And the new partners was a challenge as well. But we sort of managed to do that through sourcing expressions of interest, having lots of conversations with, with the charities, with different organisations. And we're really keen to keep this ongoing investment in these relationships and um, retain them and build on them as, as we go forward. So as well as the steering group, we had a local place-based focus, focus group and, and that was absolutely invaluable to, to our programme. So that consisted of people with long-term conditions. It had community organisations, charities, two local pharmacies joined together. We had the healthcare professionals. And what was really interesting as well, we had a community peer mental manager from um, Durham Police and Crime Commissioner's Office, which actually gave us another arm um, and, and really useful links there. And we linked in with our Wellbeing for Life programme and the local housing providers. So we had a real plethora of insight and sort of access to, to different amenities. So we used our focus group, to be honest, and we piloted a survey with them. Um, so we, again, particularly important for us to, to include people with long-term conditions as we looked at our approach. And we used the feedback from this small survey to help us devise and define a, a wider online survey. Uh, again, a bit of a challenge here. So unbeknown to us, this produced sort of a, a massive challenge. We had to work through council protocols and added to this, it had been the first time that we'd used a new online platform. We just removed Survey Monkey, so um, because it was deemed not, 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 not to be the best platform, so we brought on a new platform. So again, that was a, a massive learning curve, but we worked through it. Um, it took a bit longer and we'd anticipated, but we did it with the, with the support of, of our local team. So our next strand was our workforce development. Um, so our focus here was to look at capacity building, and that was particularly within the clinical and caring workforce, the community and the voluntary sectors. Really important to us was the physical activity community champion training and that was sort of a main driver for our campaign it has actually been successfully delivered to the uh, medical practice within Ferry Hill and Chiltern and Dr Delina reported that I enjoyed the presentation although I'm trying to encourage exercise already it provided me some good evidence to convince our patients sorry if that was a bit quiet but basically um, he said there that, yeah, it was a really good presentation and it's given him some good insights to pass on to, to his patients. Again, um, however, it's sort of, we, we've not been able to reach as many people as we'd have liked due to capacity issues and that's been linked to COVID. Our nurse clinical champion from public health was redeployed, has only just come back to... Um, to take on the, the training again. So hopefully we'll begin to rectify this now as, as she returns to a substantive post. And last week, our social prescribing link workers in the county benefited from the training. I managed to catch up with one of them who, who I can quote said, Catherine was very knowledgeable and she delivered the training in a fun, informative way and I'll definitely be recommending it to other colleagues. So it's been really well, well received. And then another area that proved really challenging due to COVID was a skills audit of existing physical activity offers in the area. However, as things are now reopening, um, we're looking at what's on and we're ensuring that there are a range of activities and opportunities. 
and that's including appropriate entry level activities. So we've identified gaps in provision and we're supporting a chair-based exercise programme with our one of the local community voluntary charities. Um, and these are just some of the, the pictures that we've got from, from that group. Again, we've got our instructor working with them here, but we are training the staff up within the community centre to be able to deliver this programme. So we've built in that arm of sustainability. So moving on to our next strand, it was our targeted marketing. We really wanted to, to make a difference with this and sort of perhaps take it to a level that we, we haven't tried before. So it, it was really good good and we were really keen to get an innovative and, and robust approach. We really went for a high visual impact. Don't know whether you can see that, that's not very high and not very visual, but it is, honestly, it's a bus stand advert. Um, and, and this actually resulted in us being invited onto our local radio uh, station, BBC Radio Tees, for an interview about the campaign. Um, we had a press launch, and there's one of our um, articles that were in the local paper. And we managed to coincide that with the TV launch in June, which worked really well. And what we've done since then is had monthly advertorials and monthly stories in the paper. And people have actually been waiting for these and, and um, have been really interested in reading the stories going forward. And these are some of our uh, posters that have been developed that we've managed to distribute to local businesses, to community buildings, through the Area Action Partnership. And I'm currently working with our CAT team, which is our community action team in Ferry Hill. And we're sharing all of our resources with them. They link directly into the housing providers as well. So again, we are really raising the profile within within this target area. Again, here's another picture of one of our local stories. And we found these have really encouraged other people with long-term conditions to become more active. We've got a growing um, portfolio of case studies, and this has helped highlight the benefits achieved and it's added value to our offer. And they've all absolutely been invaluable. These are little postcards that we've had made up and these have been used to promote the campaign. And on the back of each of them, we have four now, and they have different themes to improving overall health and well-being. So this one's about finding out what works for you. We have one about getting started. One is about um, social isolation and um, bringing people together. And another one is about the, the benefits of mental health. So hopefully we're covering our bases there. Again, the local communication plan was initially slow due to COVID restrictions and those implications, but now we have identified those key opportunities and we found that that drip feed process of starting sort of quite big, then going into our advertorials, having our postcards, having the posters has worked quite well for us in the local area. One of our key successes here, again, with our marketing has been our toolkit. Um, this has is bespoke and it's been shared with all of our partner organisations, the housing providers, clinical care workforce, voluntary community sectors. Um, in fact, any opportunity that we get to share these resources, it has been taken up. And again, this has further increased our reach for the campaign and it's raised that profile countywide. There's lots of information in here. Uh, uh, that's just available at your fingertip. It's about training opportunities, um, partner members, um, all of the national and local marketing information was, is within our toolkit. So, speeding on to our next um, strand, which was behaviour change support. I think we all recognise that people within this demographic group don't have the same levels of readiness or personal motivation in relation to participating in health behaving, uh, sort of health promoting behaviours. 
So we looked at um, the survey, which I mentioned earlier. We took this online so that we could get a, a wider demographic and we could take it county wide. So it was a bottom up approach with the survey. Again, wanted to really consult with the people with long term conditions so that we could produce qualitative information which could influence and guide campaign outcomes. And in this way, we thought that it was a real good method to help us to support self-management and gain the maximum um, effective results. Also by adopting this inclusive approach, people with long-term conditions can and have helped us co-design future activities and programmes based on the learning and the recommendations. This is our Wellbeing for Life service. This is an NHS, County Durham Darlington and NHS Foundation Trust service. We've managed to re-establish really good links with them. They provide a one-to-one -one specialist service and or group support alongside the social prescribing link workers. So this has been a really good sort of um, way that we can link in and signpost people to help them support their behaviour change. And we're also uh, quite lucky now to have a, a new county programme called MOVE. And this has been born from COVID outbreak money for those that have been disproportionately affected by COVID. Many of those, as we know, have been people with long term conditions. So it does provide traditional activities, but we also have an arm called Move Easy. And this has um, sort of a holistic approach, it offers one to one support, but also provides activities for those that are new or returning to, to start in their movement journey. And a major key success for us here is that some of our learning from We Are Undefeatable so far has helped shape this countywide programme. With our initial um, sort of thoughts, we had um, thought about giving incentive vouchers to people to motivate them and encourage them to come along to sessions and get involved. But then when we looked in, in the county, a lot of our activities are free or, or are quite low cost already. So initially now that this is this is where we've sort of driven our sort of um, we've been drawn towards these campaign bags. So we've, we've developed these. The contents um, have been sourced to help those who are starting to make changes. So they contain um, exercise at home information. So we have two booklets there, chair-based exercise, active at home booklets. We pop in our motivational, local, inspirational stories. There's a resistance band, um, the, contact, uh, the contacts for We Are Undefeatable. And also in the areas that we're, we're going to, we put in a list of the groups that people might like to join in that, that area. So this has helped support behaviour change and it's been used widely in this local pilot area. Um, it's been used in community sessions with the housing providers and with the healthcare professionals. So with the sort of behaviour change in mind, this is, this is Annabelle um, and I'm just going to play a little audio of, of Annabelle. So hopefully you can hear it. It might be a little bit bit quiet but if we get our best listening ears on I think we'll be okay. In February 2021 Annabelle fell and broke her tibia which resulted in an eight-week stay in hospital. She came out of hospital at the end of March and within 24 hours was back in after suffering a stroke. Annabelle is now on her recovery journey regaining her independence. One way Annabelle has been able to achieve this is through a new Gentle Steps to Walking group. Annabelle said, Joining Gentle Steps has started to make me stronger. I use a walking frame for support. I've been coming for four weeks and I can walk further for longer. What is really good is that you can do what you want for as long as you want. Annabelle added, 
it gets me out of the house, meeting other people, and you can walk and talk too. Annabelle makes the most of her good days. On her not so good days, she recognises that she may need to do less. Small amounts of activity all add up. So hopefully you can see there that, that this is one example of our sort of moving stories and they have been used to encourage others to, to, to get moving and come on our Gentle Walks programme. So the final strand is um, targeted marketing. Been a particular challenge during COVID and lockdown. The way that we've tried to manage this um, and continue our engagement with people with long-term conditions is the distribution of the uh, We Are Undefeatable booklet. So we had, um, I think we had about 10,000. We managed to deliver about nine and a half thousand. We sent them out to key partners and that included 125 pharmacies who were able to um, sort of work with people with long term conditions that were on their book and distribute them. And we posted out 720 um, to individuals living with long term health conditions, as well as other key partners. So we really managed to get a wide distribution of these these leaflets during during that lockdown period. We also worked with the Keep Fit Association to distribute their Movement Made Easy DVD. And this was quite an innovative approach for us because we used our library service for this and it provided free delivery service to people at their home addresses. So they registered, um, we contacted them and then the library service would deliver it to people's homes and loan it to them for a period of time. Emerging from COVID has provided us the opportunity to support community organisations to adhere to correct COVID reopening policies. And this has led to sort of collaboration, supporting new activity programmes, and again, identifying those gaps in activity provision for people living with long term conditions. And it's been further supported with a training offer to build a sustainable futureable activity programme around those, those needs. So we now feel we're in a real strong position um, as things begin to, to reopen, to raise awareness of locally available stru structured and unstructured activity opportunities, and we can support existing physical activity providers. And this way, we have a, a, an activity mobilisation programme that's accessible and appropriate to need. And one key success here has been uh, the learning from the focus group and the survey. And this evidence has facilitated and supported a targeted program of the Gentle Walks, which Annabelle is a member of, our chair-based exercise um, program, which you saw the photos of earlier, and that new, e new Move Easy program, which, I, which I've also mentioned. So that's sort of an overview where we are at the moment. So just going to recap and cherry pick some of our highlights currently. But hopefully for us, this is sort of the beginning of our, our journey still. And we're moving on to, to more places in the future because we now have extra funding um, from public health for, for at least another year to continue with this project. So the learning from our first target area has helped shape specific programme and project planning for our wider service area. So as mentioned, we have the, the MOVE, which is a specifically targeted programme aimed at those disproportionately impacted by COVID. Our learning from We Are Undefeatable has influenced the provision of these low-level low entry classes, and it's also helped restructure our wellbeing program. And that's where that sort of those gentle steps to walk in has been introduced. Uh, and what the, the gentle steps involves, it, it's that real low level um, confidence building walk. It's on a single level athletics track. The leaders of the group can have full visibility of the participants at all times. The seats around the track, so participants can, can rest at any time that they want to. 
Um, it can build confidence. We have they're on for an hour the sessions, and we have some people that do two laps. We have some people that do ten laps. Um, so it's a real inclusive um, confidence building opportunity to, to to begin a movement journey. Training offer. Uh, it's been developed and based on the needs identified originally from the steering group, and it's been brought together in that in that toolkit. And it's helped us identify the resources that, that we need to upskill and train staff to build that local capacity so that we can produce sustainable resources going forward. So again, um, a good example of this is um, the chair-based exercise group, and we're training up the community centre leads to do their level two chair-based exercise group. And that's happening um, next month, December. Um, so yeah, uh, we're looking forward to seeing how that, that progresses um, going forward. So hopefully that, that will make sure that that group can continue well into the future. The marketing toolkit has been developed in line with the national programme direction and the steering group feedback. And that's our resource bank based on our targeted approach. And again, we've mentioned that before. It's evolving all of the time. It's regularly revisited, updated to support current provision and guidelines. The steering group has been invaluable in providing our overarching guidance, insights and intelligence. It was always going to be sort of a challenge, um, even taking away COVID to re-establish relationships, to, to build new relationships. But I do think a positive um, has been that we've been able to have virtual meetings. So this has provided an accessible platform. And I think through that, we've managed to positively engage a wider audience. The survey, I'm laughing at this because it was a real journey, <laughs> a real journey for us. Um, it was challenging and like I said, it was one of those things that quite a few times I just thought, oh no, but absolutely invaluable um, and it really has helped us guide the campaign direction and um, findings reaffirmed our approach uh, that building capacity within that health, with, within the healthcare professionals is, is one of the most effective ways that we can reach people with long term conditions. And that's going to continue with our physical activity clinical champion training and the development of a, a simple signposting pathway that's going to link with our a wide range of partners, including the social prescribers, the wellbeing for life service, pharmacies and housing providers. Looking into the future, as I've said already, sort of it, we are at the beginning of our journey, we feel, and we've got so much more learning to get out of this so one of the arms is we wanted to get an independent outsourced evaluation so that we can increase our understanding and um, we can develop opportunities further opportunities to support people living with long-term conditions so this is in keeping with our action learning model and it'll help to inform ongoing program rollout at our next locality as part of our phase two of this approach. So we're looking to incorporate feedback from partners and those living with, with long-term conditions. Really keen to develop our working relationships. Again, we, we're starting to build really trusted, valued relationships with um, adult social care and really like to get a, a MEP sort of training for physical activity set up so that we can um, spread the word in simple suggestions sort of that don't impede on time for people. So we're working in collaboration with the local active partnership, County Durham Sport and UK Coaching on an offer. I've got a meeting in a couple of weeks um, about this and it's called Active Friends Training Programme. So that's hopefully going to fill that, that gap for us there. Maintain our steering group partnerships beyond the national campaign ends. Looking to do this through the toolkit updates, our newsletters, that continual communication, two-way communication. We have um, quarterly meetings still and involve campaign updates, 
continue to share insights. So really keen to keep those open uh, and accessible. Going to look at defining and continuing with our clear and simple pathways. And that's to promote ease of access and participation in wide range of activities as we build on our new and existing relationships. Um, really beginning to, to get a, a good cross partner signposting that's working well. And, and this has meant that existing activity provision through that skills and capacity order is, is not being duplicated, but it's being fully, fully utilised. Supported by UK Coaching and Sport England, we've played an active role and are helping with the co-design process on coaching in the health space. So again, this will form an integral part of our wider workforce development and capacity building programme as part of the sustainability of We Are Undefeatable. It's going to provide our coaches with confidence and competency to deliver excellent sessions for all, including people with long-term conditions. And whilst we sadly will leave Ferry Hill and Chilton, we will leave them with sustainable resources. They have marketing tools, and we're gonna to continue to, to be at arm's length to add value and work with, with the community. And we'll take our learning from this area as we sort of venture into pastures new. So that's the sort of doing it the County Durham way. Um, the recommendations that, that we would sort of say to other partners were, were sort of the establishing those strong relationships to, to share and distribute knowledge and to, to learn and, and gain those insights. The promotion of our physical activity clinical champion training and engaging with healthcare professionals and those working with long term conditions that has really helped uplift knowledge and it sort of provides people with the confidence to ask those physical activity questions. I would love to see the physical activity question being asked uh, alongside the smoking question. Do you smoke? No. Do you do physical activity? Well, no, well, this is what you can do. That would be brilliant. Developing the training offer to, offer, offer to support capacity building and need and um, provide the resources to offer the community to sustain activities and engage people with long-term conditions. Our robust marketing campaign started small, it started, it started big actually, it started with our uh, bus stand adverts, newspaper um, and, and we did this in that local area to raise the profile. We went via social media, we linked with organisations, we distributed the posters, the postcards, those stories. Um, so yeah, these are sort of our key recommendations that, that we would like to pass on. And that's me doing that was quite hard to keep my hands still, actually. I'm normally uh, one of those talkers. And I thought that might be a bit distracting, so I've been sat on them. Thank you so much, Liz. That's been really, really helpful. And um, we've had a number of questions come in on the chat. So um, in the remaining time, I'd love to put a few of those to you and Colin, if that's all right. Um, firstly, in terms of the survey and the consultation, um, there was uh, firstly a tactical question. What did you use instead of Survey Monkey in the end? Snap. There you go. Snap. It was snap. <laughs> that was not a game. That's not a game. <laughs> it, was, it was snap. And, and that's because I'm, I'm not yeah. saying, yeah, GDPR, basically. It was yeah. down to, to, yeah. to the guidance from... We call it our cog team consult yeah consultation mm. yeah, that's really bad i can't remember i should have written that one down but, but yeah th they were the team that sort of um helped us guided us through that process yeah it was a policy decision change yeah. around gdpr yeah. which uh, forced our hand basically right right um and there was a question also around who you engaged with and, and how you engaged. So you obviously had the, the online survey. Um, was there also any in-person consultation? 
you mean face to face? Yes. That's yes, right. yes. That was yeah. with our focus group. We met up with our focus group. Um, we did that um, when we came out of sort of big lockdown. We began to meet up in in the community centres and our pharmacists. The, um, we had ten people with long term conditions from from various places within the uh, local area that came along. Um, so yeah, we. I'm just trying to think social prescribing link workers living who was the local housing provider so yeah that, that's where we, we got that local insight from right right in and terms then... of the survey barbara if that was one of the questions we sent out the survey mm -hmm. to people from our list so we knew had long-term health conditions from previous activity plus as a patient but also through partners through our network who we knew would reach people with long-term conditions as well Got you, got you. And just a few questions as well have come in around the, the marketing. Um, what were, if, if, if you're able to sort of give us a sense of the, the split of the um, digital aspects of that versus the kind of hard copy stuff, what, what were the different channels that you, that you used? There I go, yeah. Um, so we were really lucky that we had um, our marketing person um absolutely invaluable in in her um sort of guidance with that as well so we went a two-armed approach we did the local approach which was quite a visual approach so like i've explained sort of the ads the um ad shells and then an, another arm was we had social media so we have our own website um, we use DCC website as well to share all of our information. We shared it with the local partners. So, for example, in our local pharmacy, they have um, one of those boards out the front that, that I can't remember what you call them. You know what I mean? Those and television board. screens. <laughs> so so we, we, we advertised on there. Um, linked in with the community centres so it was on all their social media pages with the updates with the postcards so that went out quite regularly and it was nice to be able to use the more informal platforms because again working through Durham County Council platforms there's certain protocols that you, you have to to go through to get to, to post on social media but we were able to to post through those local channels to to reach that that sort of local demographic a little bit easier than going through the the sort of dcc yeah yeah and that there was actually you touched on pharmacies there there was actually a question that came in about how did you build links with the pharmacies to help you with the leaflet distribution it was through a contact in public health um again for working in a hub during um during during covid pandemic and uh, our community hub um, we had good links into public health and we already did have um, good links to the public health, but we found another link into, into the officer who, the manager rather, who had over, who oversees all of the um, links to the, to the pharmacies. And she was invaluable in giving us the address to the 125 of them we have in County Durham. Right. Just in terms of the marketing, Bob, I, I wouldn't know what the exact split was between um, social media and paper-based but we're really keen to make sure we got a balance and included people who didn't have access to digital, particularly yeah. with this demographic that we're talking about here. Because all of our research tells us that they rely much more on their word of mouth um, or paper based in their local communities as opposed to social media. So we were keen not to exclude people digitally. Did that also apply to the, the survey you did? Was, was there a way for people to participate in that if they weren't able to get onto the online version? Yeah, we, we had um, paper copies in our libraries and in the medical centres. So that was accessible. And if people contacted me via our website, we would send, send them out to them so that they could return us. Perfect, us. perfect. Um, got a couple of questions as well about the physical activity offers. Um, so one of them was who delivered your steps to walking programme and what training did you provide? Um, the, the gentle steps to walk and as part of our Walk Durham programme within yeah. our wellbeing and partnerships team we have a, a team of people who have a walking, cycling and, and running programme. So that, that was the arm that delivered that um, 
and they were trained in-house and linked into the, the National Walking Programme as well. Thank you. Um, another question um, has come in around physical activity um, uh, offer. Were any activities, um, online activities, but that could be accessed within community settings so people could still feel like they were participating within a group setting? Not at the moment. That's a really good question because that's where we're heading to next. Ah. Part of this MOVE campaign, we have again a, a resource allocated towards digital where we're about to just engage with uh, um, the local community centres to see who would be wanting to do that and how could we enable them to do that and hopefully we can make that happen. Great. Um, and a question about uh, sustainability plans. How do you see the programme being supported longer term, um, thinking about finances and, and resources? What, what are your thoughts in that area? Sorry, can you repeat that one, Barbara? Did you quite thinking about the sustainability of, of the program in terms of uh, finances and resources how do you see it being supported longer term well as liz alluded to in the presentation we're fortunate that public health have recognized the value of this uh, this work and we're undefeatable and the investment from sport england has certainly helped us to raise that awareness so we've guaranteed now at least 12 months additional funding with all of this we will be able to demonstrate and hopefully with the independent evaluation that we're going to get will, will strengthen our arguments um, to make the case for this to say that we need further investment in the longer term. I think we'll always say that. I think everybody will say we're trying to deal with um, kind of long term problems with short term funding. It doesn't really work. So we need some longer term funding to provide yeah. um, you know, some, some, some longer term um, solutions here. Thank you. Um, and then just one more question, if I may. Uh, a couple of uh, qu queries have come in. If people would like to get a copy of the toolkit, the marketing toolkit, and see what's in there, um, and also the questions that you asked in the survey, are they able to access that? That's in the, um, the overall learning, isn't it? I think in, in time, I don't see any reason why not at all? It was an online survey. I can share those questions. And those were, again, we used the, the, the 10 people with, with long-term conditions to pilot it, to ask them were the questions relevant, did they see the value in them? And then they were, they were tweaked um, using sort of the people with long-term conditions, their comments, and sharing the information with, with our wider wellbeing team so that we, we actually thought that the questions we asked would make an impact and help us to sort of draw that on qualitative um, information. So, yes, that, that's not a problem. Barbara, well, can I just return to the investment uh, question as well? Longer term, it's probably fair to say as well that in, in Durham County Council, we're, we're really fortunate that we're about we're investing £80 million into our leisure facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, to actually rebuild, so rebuild some, um, renovate some, refurb some, but also build some new uh, leisure centres. And within that, we're going to make sure that the well-being offer is, is is in there as well. So we're changing the culture really, and, and changing the offer, so it's linked to the community and more accessible for for everybody. Perfect. Thank you so much to both of you. We'll have to close there, but it's great to have seen so many questions come in. There's clearly a huge amount of interest and respect for the work that you've done. Um, so really appreciate that. Thanks to everybody for joining us as well. If you do have any other follow-up questions, uh, feel free to send them my way and I'll, I'll filter them through as appropriate. Um, Barbara at insightangels.com. Um, and hopefully we'll see you at some of the other sessions in the next couple of days, which you can access the, the meeting links for if you don't have invited. Um, through the invitation for this session there's a, there's a link there that you can you can go to them from um, but thanks very much and thanks so much to, to Liz and Colin for joining us and walking us through that today uh, thank, you. thank you thank you